Good afternoon, good evening, and good morning to all of you around the world watching this video right now. I am Mighty Mapper123, and this is the first episode of Army Men of War Battle Maps. So, Battle Maps is going to be a series where the Discord are going to be taking over what happens on the battle map and what happens in the politics of Army Men of War for the next three episodes. So before I start this video, I wanted to say smash that like button and also drop a bomb on that subscribe button if you are new to the channel. This is gonna be a super duper epic scientific experiment that we're going to be doing with this series on this channel. The story could go in any direction and I'm super excited to see what the Discord members, or should I say the Discord faction leaders, have to say about what happens next in Army Men of War. So I wanted to give a huge shout out to Captain Kean Blue Sister. He is in charge of the Blues. I'm not sure if I said that right. Prime Minister CJ, you are in charge of the Greens. Crown Prince Gracefield II is in charge of the Greys. We have Orange Chief of State Oramat Pasha. We have the South Viet Tan, which is Chancellor Fritz Wilhelm the 75th. Also, I think he answers to a new Tan Emperor, but I'll get into that in a moment. We have the North of Viet Tan, which is being led by Lord Tandy. We have Pope J. Perlington, who is in command of the Perlinese forces in the South. And we obviously have Rednin as the Commander-in-Chief of the Red Union. So a big shout out to you guys. These are real people in the Discord server which access this chat right here which is the United Plastic Nations chat room. Whatever they put in this chat room in the Discord, I'm going to be taking notes and putting it into an episode of Army Men of War Battle Maps. So this is a, a bit of a new series, but we're, we're, we're going to make this main law because I'm super excited to see what direction the series goes. So I've made a few edits on this map. I've added flags now to every location on the map to show you guys who owns what. So, for example, in Tangier at the moment, we have the UCP flag right there, which is all nations fighting against Obsidian. Obsidian have actually fell back to the nuclear fallout area, as you can see, and they, they seem attracted to the darkness that the Big Boom brought upon Tangeria. That's pretty cool. We can see that the Purples are also still fighting against the red UCP forces. Obviously, the Blues aren't going to be too happy about them being nuked to be honest that was like 900 men just gone in an instant so this map is pretty much fully updated now i'm going to be updating this a lot more especially pumping out a lot more of these battle map episodes for you guys if this does work i'm going to do the discord uh, series a lot more than before we did try this in the past but it didn't really work out but i thought let's bring it back just because copper might destroy my channel in, in, in next month but, but who knows maybe it won't because i class this channel as family friendly and appealing to a general audience if you're under the age of 13 i tell you to turn away from this this video right now it's not for you it, it has politics we have adult humor and we have a lot of killing and death in this channel mohaha <laughs> but yes anyway so without further ado and first and foremost we're going to talk about each policy which the discord faction leaders have made so we're going to start off with South Viet Tan. So South Viet Tan policy script. As the two sides of Viet Tan split into North and South, the country goes into turmoil. Arguments break out among the parliamentary members, nationalism becomes the country's main focus once again. And Platos, the leader and president of South Viet Tan, loses favor among the masses. The head of parliament, Chancellor Fritz Wilhelm, brings forward a plan to merit Lord Malice for his efforts towards driving the Greens and Oranges out of their nation. After a long debate, Parliament decides that the South needs a new monarch, a figurehead to reignite the spark that once was the glorious Tan Empire. They elect Malice as their new Emperor. Chancellor Fritz Wilhelm is elected as the foreign dignitary and Platos is now recognized as the ex-president of a once united Viet Tan. So the new political changes of the Southern Viet Tan nation will consist of a name change to the Grand Duchy of Viet Tan, and the way it is governed will be through its Imperial Council, which will give guidance to the Emperor in any decision that he sees fit. The Council will then answer to the Chancellor if and when a policy has been decided. As of military, 
Tygon plans to train a new elite Imperial Guard called the Vengeance Guard. Guerrilla warfare will be the primary tactic they use against the North or any foreign invaders. A national draft will also be put in place and a militia ready to fight at a moment's call. Even the local fishermen will have their boats armed and ready if an evasion, invasion is to commence by sea. For now, the main focus is to defend what borders they have and build defences along their coastlines, whilst also opening a diplomatic negotiation with the North to see if they can win favour over the new Unionist government. So that is the Southern Vietnamese policy, or should we say the Grand Duchy of Vietnam. So we have their new flag right here, look, made by the Discord yet again. We have the main characters. We can see here we have the new Emperor, which is Emperor Malice. We also have, <coughs> excuse me, losing my voice. We also have the Discord representative right here who shows up as a politician. And we have the ex-president of Vietnam, which is now General Plato, so he's just going to be a general again, unless the Discord sees fit to execute him or just remove him in general. You know, I'll have to find out for the next episode. So, this is Vietnam at the minute. I'm just going to do a quick scroll over everywhere. Look, so you can pause the video to see all of your forces. Each one of these soldiers represents 100 men. We have airfields, we have villages, towns, and everything, as you can see on this battle map right here. Look. This is made up of all of the towns, cities, and provinces right here, if, if I found it, that was. And anyway, in the north, we have a different set of rules under a new government now. So this is the northern policy. So the North Vietnam policy. The north of Vietnam has recently split away from the south after the Reds marched into the capital called Tanoi. They overwhelmed President Plato's forces and taken full control of the northern provinces. General Sahara of the Unionist Tans People's Party was put in control. He has no choice but to look up to the Reds as a father nation. This doesn't mean that Sahara hates the South though. He may hold office like he always had wanted, but he still feels true to his nationalistic beliefs. After all, him and Plato's are old friends. Maybe unionism is what's best for the North in these hard times, but still, an empire is what feels right, and at the first opportunity, he plans to reunify the provinces once more. But under whose ruling? That is the biggest question. The NLA are at Sahara's command, and his first priority is to militarize his nation by setting up a national draft. Everyone must contribute to the Northern Liberation Army. The North needs an air force and a navy, so he plans to build one but will the Reds allow such a move? So that is the policy of the North. I have rewritten these. These are literally out of the mouths of the Discord uh, members or the Discord faction leaders. And I have just rewritten them. So I have actually ran it past them all as well. And they've all said, yes, this is how this is how we want it written sort of thing. This, is, this looks okay. So I'm going to try and give you guys an update in every episode, see what policies they change. I'm also going to be doing some battles as well, that's going to be pretty epic. Not in this video though, but in a future video. So that is North Vietnam now, we can see the capital of Tanoi. And we can see the cool new North Vietnamese units look. They look very unionist, they look more like the Reds now. And they look pretty cool with their helmets, and they're actually a darker shade of tan this time. Whereas the others are a lighter shade of tan. And again, you can see the political... Um, Discord unit right there, that's the guy who is in the Discord, which is Fritz Will. no not Fritz Wilhelm, that's Lord Tandy, should I say, getting mixed up, they're, they're both Tan after all. So anyway, third and foremost we have the Green Policy Script, I'm going to do this in order. So we're going to go over to the Kingdom of Greenland now, also known as the United States of Greenland. So we can see all of these different units down here, we're going to actually hover over the Queen, we can see that they're rebuilding the old capital of Greenington now, which is going to be pretty epic. Um, if you've been with this series for a while now, you know that this place was nuked by a big boom some time ago. We have the Green Queen over here now, and again, the Discord faction leader right here. So this is this is super epic. I'm actually really enjoying this cool little new thing that we're doing, this event. If you want to see more, let me know. And also, like I say, like this video, please. I've, I've got a feeling the more likes you get on the video, the more YouTube push it to other people. That's pretty cool. So the Green Policy Script. Since the uprising of Queen Ivy, 
The Green Nation has been using its political power and influence to try and create a new world order through the recent disaster being the invasion of Obsidian. From across the unknown seas they attacked Tangeria and forced a united coalition of plastics to become the new foundation of what could be a new united world. Just what the Queen had intended. They made an alliance with the Orange Sultanate of Tangeria in an attempt to disperse the chances of another GOR alliance and also increase their now damaged economy. The Queen is not out for revenge against the GOR, but instead invites its members to unite and stop what seems to be a never-ending war. In the present day, the Queen looks to her new subordinate Prime Minister CJ to bring fortune and democracy to the Green Nation and try to look past these recent accusations of being in favour of unionism. They fear the worst which is that Obsidian may bring darkness to their coastline someday, so as the Prime Minister's first edict, he recommends stationing more National Guard companies in the south to defend Valleyput from any potential Obsidian Perlinese threat, and also begin construction of a second carrier fleet using the new funds generated by the Tangerian Mining Company. So we can see on the map, look, we can see everything is being put into place by myself now. You can see that they're moving units down south now, lots and lots of units. They're going to be stationing marines, we're going to have national guard all along the southern coastlines. I think their main um, position to guard will be Valley Put, which is this area right here, which you can see they're also building another carrier fleet. So there's going to be two carrier fleets for the greens in the future, so that's pretty cool. So other than that, I think I'll just give you a quick showcase of all the units, look, that you can see on the battle map. So I think it's it's about time they started repairing this city, fixing it up, and uh, yeah, getting it back to how it used to be, because we've been without a green capital for a while now. We had to make this the green capital, which is the town of Grenfield. Again, I'll get up the battle map right here so you guys can see where all these places are located in Greenland. You can see the provinces right here. That's pretty cool. So anyway, next we have the blue policy. So we'll go over to the blues now. This is the kingdom of Blutania. We can see the king himself, King Scotfrey, in the center of Bludonium, which is the capital. So, so the death of King Greenland did not play well on Blue King Scotfrey. The queen's usurp of the throne and recent neglect of the blue-green relations has insulted the very foundation of the blue-green alliance which has lasted for over three centuries. The Green Queen has allied herself with the very thing that they swore to defeat. The, blues, the blue imperialist nature brings forward a desire to abolish the alliance treaty with the Kingdom of Greenland. A time has come to let, let, let bygones be bygones and end the war with the Greys and the Tans as they all share one common goal, and that is to remove the Tyrant Queen from power. Eastern Blutania will become equally divided among the Red Union, Growl and Blutania on the terms that the Eastern Maine becomes a neutral state along with the Spill. The war is over. A treaty has been signed with the Eastern Powers to create and mobilise a force strong enough to invade Greenland and bring an end to the tyranny that is Queen Ivy. Also, an alliance with the Tans seems to be in the best interest of the Blues so an expeditionary force will be sent and prepared to, to aid the foundations of the newly established Tan Empire under the command of Lord Malice, or Emperor Malice. With their help and experience, they plan to put Shawshank, the hero of Greenland, on the throne in her place and reform the relationship that the Blues so crave from with the Greens, should I say. But it's really hard to read these out. I am doing this live, you see. So next up, well, in fact, let's just go over what we just did there. So this is the blue battle map right here. Look, we can see all of the provinces of the blue lands. If we look towards the east right here, we can see the eastern main and we can also see the spill. They now belong to, well, the spill and the eastern main is now neutral. Uh, the reds now own the whole of Highton or Ruskengrad as they call it. The greys have had to move further up here, which is... Uh, I believe is it is this Robinsdale up here or Scottsdale. Yeah, I'll have to. Uh, <laughs> sometimes I forget this map's so big. But uh, yeah, the Greys own this area now, and they're keeping the Eastern Main into a giant kind of wild west or wild east or whatever you want to call it. 
So anyway, so that's got the UP, UCP flag right there. So it's a kind of united coalition of plastics. Anyone can enter this land, which there's a lot of farmland and a lot of stuff like that. So this is pretty cool. Again, yeah, I think it's, it's a good move, all made by the Discord. I'm looking forward to where this story is going. I like it so far. So next up, we have the orange policy. So if we go, oh, before I do that, actually, the blues have actually constructed a super fortress as well. I forgot to mention, there's this thing which they've been working on. It's literally facing the green isles. This is where they actually keep the blue treasury. It's a bit like a Fort Knox of the blue nation. So I just thought I'd mention that, that as well as it's, it's new to the map. So now let's move over to the oranges. So the orange sultanate of Tangeria. So I'm hovering over the capital city right here, which is Tangiers. Obviously, we can see that it's still under siege by the purples. We can see the Discord representative right here being the faction leader, as well as the real faction leader, which is Sultan Laventine, uh, the guy that overthrew Sultan Rumex some time ago. And uh, yeah, he wants to become the most powerful nation in Plastica. And I'm going to read out his policy now on to why he wants to do that. So, as a result of the continued rebellion of the Tans, along with the Purple and Obsidian invasion, the Tangerian National Army has declared martial law and has formed the National Emergency Council, being the NEC. With Colonel Oromet Pasha as the chairman of the said council, this council will henceforth assume all powers of the apparatus of state in line with the tenets of martial law and will be disbanded when the state of national emergency has been deemed concluded. Furthermore, the chairman of the National Emergency Council will be issued the title of Chief of State at the behest of the Sultan. Sultan Laventine has done good by his promise to preserve the pride of the orange race. This premeditated alliance with the Greens could really set them on the right track to become the almost as powerful or the most powerful in Plastica. All that needs to come from this is the end of Obsidian and a united world peace. Then as the richest and most formidable nation, they mean to influence the rest of the world. When it comes to the military, a joint coalition with the Greens will be the means of killing off all of the Tan rebel kind and cementing their right to rule over the once great Tan Empire. So yes, so we can see that all of this right here, this is Tangeria, it's a continent. And it's also the former Tan Empire. The Tan Empire used to stretch all the way from this continent of Tangeria all the way over to the full length of Viet Tan. But all of that used to be the Tan Empire. They used to be the strongest nation before the First Great Plastic War. Again, I think we might go... We're going to dive more into the First Great Plastic War in the future. I've got a whole law written about that as well if you want to hear about that. So like this video if you want to hear more about the First Great Plastic War. So let's get the map up. This is the battle map. These are the provinces of the Orange, well, the Orange Sultanate of Tangeria. It used to be the Orange Republic of Tangeria, but we did change it. Uh, that looks pretty cool. We've got so many provinces. Like I say, I've added all the flags and stuff now. We can see all of the units around the coastlines. So we've got a lot of soldiers. Obviously, there's been a lot of Tangerians die with this recent attack on Obsidian. So now we're going to move over to the Red Union. Let's go over to the capital, which is Redingrad. Again, we can see the Tsar right there, that's Tsar Valentine. He sounds very much alike uh, Sultan Laventine, but I assure you this guy is just, it's just, I don't know, it's just coincidence. Because this is Tsar Valentine, that's his name, and this guy on the right, again, is our Disc Discord representative. And this is what the Reds had to say in the Discord. The Red Union remains to be the most influential nation in the East. The recent takeover of the northern capital, Tanoi, has divided the Tan nation in two. Tsar Valentine does not want another Tan Empire to coexist with the Red Union. After all, they were primary, the primary competition throughout the ages. The recent end to the war with the Blues has gave the Red Union time to think about their next move. They like the new proposal brought forward to them by the Green Queen and the Oranges. It means that a buffer zone will remain between the Unionists' ideologies and also imperialism. They can see that with the Tans out of the picture permanently, it leaves the legitimate ruling of the legitimate ruling of the Tan Empire open to the oranges. They are easier to manipulate and with their new vast wealth and the Red Union can even profit from 
that wealth just like the Greens did. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting a bit mixed up with my own words here. It's hard to read these sentences because they're so, they're so rammed together. So, removing the imperialist tan legitimacy is the more viable option indeed. The key move militarily will be to assist the subjugate northern tan nation as much as possible in their civil war and leave the demise of the south to the oranges and the greens. Perhaps just settle with a non-aggression pact after everything settles down a little bit. So that, that's what they plan to do. They plan on just settling down after they've they've pretty much just thrown North North Vietnam into the deep end and said, sort it out, you know. Um, we've got you back if you need us, but that's all we're going to do for now. We're just going to rebuild our armies. We're just going to rekindle what we once had. We need to be powerful again. That's what the Reds want. So the Greys, on the other hand, have other plans as their ally. The Reds mean to assist them in any way they deem necessary in their war efforts, but only as long as it doesn't affect the best interest of the Red Union. So that is the Red Union policy. Again, we'll get up the map for the Red Union right here. We can see all the provinces of the Red Union. Um, obviously, it's not up to date. I need to up update it, but I just lost. I'm not joking. It took me like three weeks to make the original Photoshop document of the battle map. And I'm not joking. I did like this little thing where I deleted my OneDrive documents. And for some reason, it deleted every document on my com computer. So I've lost so much work. It's unreal. Henceforth, I'm having to redo the battle map as well and position all the units again. But um, we, we don't care now because the Discord is doing that for us. So anyway, we're going to move over now to the Polonese policy. There's only one more policy after this, so do stick around to the end of the video. Um, this is really cool to learn about if you want to learn about the Army Men of War lore. It's really in-depth. We've worked so hard on it. it. We could literally make a movie or a book out of how much we've written on this series. It's pretty crazy. So this right here is the capital, Palantis. And obviously Palantis is ruled by the pinks. I've not put any pinks on the map yet as I'd st I'm still updating this mod. But um, we can see all of the purple forces. So this is the purple policy. The vast armies of pirates known as the Perlanese have been nothing but assets to the other nations of Plastica. A ruling of mercenaries, tribal bandits and natives among the first worlders. They have become very rich and powerful, allying and cheating their way to the top. <laughs> well, to the top of the standing with among the other oligarchs of this world. And now it is time that Pearl means to become their own independent sovereignty. Their warlords must unite, and the modernization of Palantis will set a threshold into the new world that is to be formed once Obsidian take over. The call of Pethulu is upon them, and all must pay homage to the Holy War prophecy which is known to them as the End Times. A coalition of Purple and Obsidian mark the beginning of the end of the tyranny which is the Children of Light. All primary colours must fall. To build this new world their villages must become towns, their shipyards must become ports, and a senate established to rule the world once darkness has taken its toll. Any enemies of Pearl will perish and the ideology of chaos will be brought upon its adversaries. So, uh, that's really good writing there, I'm really proud of that. We should, I'm actually going to put all this into a, a sort of Army Men of War Wikipedia on my website which is www.mightymapper123.com forward slash army men. Link is in the description if you want to go and check that out and download this mod. Well, download the first version of this mod because this one's still broken. Um, but grey policy, let's move to them now. So before we move to the greys actually, let's just go over the purples really quick. Because there's a huge misunderstanding with these guys. They're like, I don't get it, what's going on with these purples? But what it is, is Pethulu, as you can see right here, has made an appearance. Pethulu is classed as one of the spawn of Obsidian, like his son sort of thing. He's like a dark god. He's made an appearance and the prophecy has been foretold by those green guys in the red hats. And also Pethulu himself. And he has said, basically, Purples, now is your time. Let's take over the world, and the Purples have joined the cause. This was written in the prophecy, like, thousands of years before, and now it's actually coming true, which is pretty cool. So, anyway, we've got Obsidian with the Purples. We have the Reds, we have the Tans, and, well, we have two versions of the Tans now. We've got so many factions in this series, and that's it, or I'm joking. Obviously, we've got the Greys. I like to wind you guys up by always forgetting the Greys. So, anyway, let's go to the north, which is the Greys. So, believe it or not, right, I've been sent a ton of documents, as you can see right here, look, from the Greys. I've not had a chance to read them all tonight, as a lot of it, I needed to put it into just three paragraphs, so the video isn't 
10 hours long because it's already quite long as it is um, but uh, I've managed to put this together I've not run it past the leader of the Grey Nation yet but I have took notes from their policies that they've sent me um, but so this right here is the Grey policy so the Grey Nation of Growl also known as the Quiet Nation has been preparing for an economic event that could potentially carry their way of life thousands of years to come a series of electric hydro dams have been established between each Great Isle and they mean to provide transportation and ease of access between the neighbouring islands as well as provide an unlimited power source that could be used to generate millions of gigawatts of power per year. On top of that they will also be draining out part of the sea to make room for more agricultural means and land ownership. So the Greys actually want to drain that middle part of the sea out I don't think they want to drain all of it out, but just part of it out, which is quite a cool idea. And I think they're in the process of doing that now. You can see everything on the battle map. This is what's happening right now. Obviously, they're also doing some other things as well, but I'm going to include those in the next videos. So the capital city located in the central archipelago is the home to Emperor Kaiser Wilhelm II. His policies bring the neighboring Red Union and Eastern Blutanians together in a new treaty designed to unite against the tyrant they call Queen Ivy. The Greys have agreed to vacate the Eastern Main and move further west to grant a buffer zone between the Reds and the Blues. This land will no doubt become the new Wild West, or should we say Wild East? I think I've already made that joke. Um, I guess it will form as part of the neutral zone formally established during the Great War some hundreds of years ago. As of the Grey Defence Policy, they mean to turn their islands into a giant complex fortress, arming its borders, coastlines and more. They will also be building radar in every corner of the Empire to secure its borders from any type of invasion. As an extra measure of defence, sea forts will become a ways and means of defending against enemy vessels, also put in place to defend the work in progress Great Bridge to the Red Union. This could mark a new era of trade for the Grey Isles. Now that the trade embargo between the Greys and the Blues has been lifted, work will also continue on the volcanic Isle of Gralta. This could also bring great fortune to the Grey Nation. So that is all I have written about the Greys at the minute. Obviously there's plenty more to talk about with the Greys because you guys in the Discord are so dedicated. You, you've got like a year or two years worth of uh, documents which you've been meaning to get involved with this series since the last time we opened up the Discord roleplay with this series. But that, that's pretty epic though. I am going to take my time to read through them and make sense out of it. But I hope what we've written there, it summarises just their national policy for now but we will mention some other things in future videos so we can see that there's the capital in the center we can see our nice little uh, discord representative right there it looks like godzilla between those buildings and um, we can see all the hydro dams that they've been building so i'll have to find out which part they are draining out i think it's this central part they're going to drain all the water out of there i think or maybe it's just all of it because could you imagine all the agriculture that they could build the only problem is i can imagine it'll be very hilly and a lot of canyons and a lot of things like that because that is ocean that's miles i class something like that to be about a, a one square mile in this series you know and that's quite big that's what i'd usually use as reference for a map that i make when we zoom into the battle map so anyway that's growl um do, do excuse me if i've been a bit stuttery in this video but uh yeah i've just had a, a big takeout it was lovely it was italian and it was delicious you know i'm trying oh and um, by the way i'm trying this new thing as well which is 25 days of uploads um i know they're coming out after midnight some of them but i'm still trying to do a video every day for you guys even if it's just a smaller kind of video so i hope you are really enjoying these also growl by the way are building a bridge i forgot to mention that they're in the process of building transportation between the red union and growl so you can see they've got a big bridge being built here when it's built it should be around six or seven miles long which is pretty big if you ask me, but I think the record breaking bridge ever built is over 100 miles, so that does kind of make sense. I thought it wouldn't because of how the tectonic plates would move and eventually the bridge would just separate with the tectonic plates. Or uh, tell, tell me if I'm just being, you know, special there, I, I don't know. But um, yeah, that's, that's why I didn't think a big bridge would work. But anyway, this has been me, Mighty Mapper123, obviously. Be sure to smash that like button, also subscribe, join the Mighty Nation. 
subscribe to my second channel, become a Patreon, you know, all that palaver. You know, all the links are in the description if you are interested. But the most important thing is let's get to, I don't know, let's try and get a thousand likes on this video and I will produce, I don't know, let, let's say, well, let's give you guys a reward if this video gets a thousand likes. Let's, let's say we'll do, we'll do like a whole, like a whole cinematic from start to finish of the law of army men of war we'll do something like that i'll project it like a big big thing that should be pretty epic so for those of you that have just joined this channel you can watch just one video to catch up with the whole series i think that's something that we need on this channel to be honest because there's been a lot happen like i said we could write a book or make a movie it's like plastic game of thrones up in here but yeah anyway i'm at Apple, my mother i can't even speak i'm my map one two three four eight nine six two one i don't know anymore uh, i'm just gonna end the video goodbye everybody love you